Hey folks, what's good? This is BQ coming to you in audio form today. This is the Impact Lounge YouTube channel, number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan. So the number one place that you need to be subscribing if you aren't already. I haven't had a chance to talk to you guys too much lately. You know that I had to pull out of the Cool Factor podcast for a little bit until uh, my work schedule lets up, which it's starting to let up a little bit, but uh, I'm still expecting a pretty rough month. So hopefully I'll be back in the saddle uh, in a normal capacity very, very soon. But I haven't had a chance to talk to you guys in a little while, like I said. So there's a couple things that I just want to give some thoughts on. And um, you may have heard TW or, or Lewis kind of talk about some of this stuff already. But I uh, wanted to give my thoughts on this. So uh, first things first, this wasn't something either of them have spoken on so far. And it was uh, in regards to Bully Ray's tweet about Michael Nakazawa wearing the Impact Wrestling Championship over his shoulder and the TNA Championship around his waist. Uh, Kenny Omega came out for a segment on AEW Dynamite. He, of course, had the AEW World Championship. Michael Nakazawa came behind. He had the Impact Championship and the AAA, what they call the Mega Championship, maybe, um, around each shoulder, and the TNA title around his waist. Bully puts out a tweet, something along the lines of, uh, I don't have it right in front of me right now. Uh, of impact management, basically should be should be pissed that what he called Micah uh, Michael Naka nobody or something like that um, was wearing the impact championship, and you know that Kenny should have had it over his shoulder, draped over his shoulder. So I'll say I was watching this episode and. I did notice it. <laughs> it it did stand out to me when it happened. And even though it did stand out and it kind of jumped out at me like, wow, you know. It, it was still putting the Impact Wrestling title on TV. Much like the Impact Tag Team titles have shown up in New Japan, it's a, it's a brand recognition thing. You know, uh, you can't promote a product or promote a brand without it being out there without people seeing it. So I really didn't think too much of it, to be totally honest with you. In response to Bully Ray's tweet, uh, and I'd like to know what you guys think, if you're, you were kind of offended by it or whatever, if it made it seem like a lesser championship than it is. Um, in response to Bully Ray's tweet, Don Callis was there. <laughs> he was part of any other, he, he's part of every Kenny Omega segment there is, except that one. He was there, so to say, well, Impact Management should be pissed that this happened. Like, Impact Management was there. So, it's kind of a non-conversation. He clearly, clearly cleared it. Gotta love how that sounds. He cleared it, clearly. Uh, clearly, he was okay with it. Um... There hasn't been any rumblings or anything come out that he wasn't or that he spoke to him afterwards. Like he, I'm sure he knew exactly what he was going out there to do. And it gets some heat on Omega, which I think people are underestimating what they're trying to do here when it comes to him, when it comes to Callis. They're trying to get heat on these dudes. And Michael Nakazawa is his you know, assistant, so to speak. And you know Kenny can't wear all the belts. He can't come out with all of them. I mean, you, you'll see a guy like... Or you've seen a guy like Austin Aries come out and they're draped over all his arms and you know, all his arms like he's an octopus. Two arms, you know, he's got a couple on one, a couple on the other. You know, it's usually how the whole belt collector thing works. But, uh, you know, that's not what it was this time around. The TNA title was around his waist. So I'd rather that have been the case than the Impact title being around his waist. Because even though the TNA title has more of the history and the lineage, it's a defunct championship. I know they... I guess it's not now, but it's the old belt. It's still the old belt, end of the day. And uh, if you look at Kenny Omega's... <laughs> Lewis sent this to me, a picture zoomed up on. I don't know if you guys have seen it. It's Kenny Omega's first picture with the, uh, with the belts. If you zoom up on the TNA belt, one of the side plates is completely falling off. Like they couldn't, uh, <laughs> couldn't bother to fix it before the photo shoot. Who, who knows how long it's been like that, but it was you know, hanging by, on by one corner. Uh, I don't know how many of you guys saw that. I want to talk a little bit about 
the AW Impact thing, I, I know we, we talk about it a lot here on the channel. And um, what I want to get at is, you know, there's a lot of, I read a lot of comments. I don't always respond, but I read a lot of comments where people are saying they're, you know, this made the Impact title look bad. Um, you know, made, made Rich Swan look bad. It, it did make Rich Swan look bad, in my opinion. Um, some people were saying, I'm, I'm not even going to watch Impact now. It's disrespectful. They're just giving in to AEW. So here, here's, here's what I have to say about this. This is based on, you know, conversation I have with people in the know. All right. You know, straight from the horse's mouth, basically. That... And I think I've kind of alluded to this before. I, I know TW has. This partnership is not meant to be seen as if the two companies are equal. Impact is supposed to come out, come off as the underdog, and that's why the Tony Khan segments where they're making fun of the company, and that's why they marched an underdog champion out there versus Kenny Omega. I think at times we felt like Rich Swan was supposed to be presented like he was on the level of Kenny. And that would, that's not the case. That's not what it was supposed to be. Now, I'm going to say regarding their match of Rebellion, I never felt like Rich had a chance to win the match. And that was, that was my, I think, big critique looking back at it. I thought, he, I thought it would be a little more even. You know what I mean? I thought that Rich would get some near falls in there, you know? But that wasn't the case. Um, Rich Swan was meant to be presented as a smaller underdog champion. And... You guys got to understand this storyline here. They, you know, Impact has storylines that they will rush in, in like three weeks, you know? But this is not one of them. There's a lot more story to be told here. And I, I caution you guys to, to not say I'm giving up on Impact. I'm going to stop watching Impact. That, uh, you know, they're disrespecting, uh, you know, their, their championship, um, disrespecting their own company. Many people ask, why does an impact show up on AEW? I've asked this question, okay? There is no limits to who shows up from impact on AEW. Just, just to put that, put that out there. I think some of you wonder, are, is Tony Khan saying impact can't come over? There's no limitations. Impact can send people over or they can, you know, Tony Khan can request people. But at the end of the day, you know, TW talked about this on the, Cool Factor Podcast. And j just so you know, I'm speaking to you guys. I'm recording this on a Sunday. Uh, it, it, this podcast, this audio is going to come out Tuesday because we got the Kimberly interview dropping Monday, Cool Factor Sunday. So I'm speaking to you a couple days before. I'm recording this a couple days before you're hearing it. <clears throat> but TW, you know, kind of talked about this when he was quoting Chris, G Chris Jericho and everything. AW has a lot of talents. They have three shows. You know, two of them are YouTube. So basically, they have TV time for X amount of people. They're not going to use that opportunity to bring in additional people for Impact when they already got the Good Brothers on TV. You feel me on that? Now, there's a storyline that feels built in for Impact, and that's John Moxley and Eddie Kingston. Um, it's crazy. Eddie Kingston's been in Impact twice, and they... Couldn't do anything with him, but he's, you know, he's a big deal in AEW. They've done a really good job with him. So Moxley and Eddie Kingston against the whole, the a Bullet Club or the Bootleg Club, whatever you, want to, whatever you want to call them. They need three partners if, if you're doing like a five on five, you know. There's a, there's a built-in storyline of, of, hey, we got these three, you know, a few guys that want to get some revenge. And you get uh, Swan in there. You get, uh, you know, Eddie Edwards. It's Saban in there. I don't know. So there's there's a storyline built in. They're probably not going to do that. I think it's very clear they're not going to do that. But this was Impact Wrestling's storyline, and that's what this boils down to. That's why we didn't see, uh, you know, AW promoting it so much. And it would have made sweat sense for Swan to show up at some point on the show, but neither here nor there. But the storyline, this is designed. I used this analogy when I was re reviewing Rebellion, where I said it felt like Rocky. Uh, it felt like Rocky II where Apollo Creed was knocked out by Ivan Drago and Rocky's like holding his head looking up at Ivan Drago, you know? I got that vibe when Eddie Edwards was holding Rich Swan looking up at Kenny Omega. 
and this is going to be a rocky story, folks. Whoever wins this six-way at Under Siege, I don't think is going to beat Kenny Omega. I think Kenny's going to have the title for a while. I'm going to get more into who I think is or isn't going to beat Kenny Omega in a separate upload. I promised I was going to do that. Uh, so, so I want you guys to, to look out for it. I was waiting for the Under Siege card to be, you know, the, the, field, the field to be filled before I uh, recorded it. So that's going to be coming this week. But this is a rocky story, folks. It's, it, it was never meant for Impact to be uh, on the same level. It's about Impact getting its eventual come up. All right. Um, a couple things as far as signings go. And I know Lewis spoke on this. Killer Kelly is uh, strongly rumored to be joining Impact Wrestling. This was probably the one out of the four we saw in the tag team tournament that I wanted to, I wanted to see show up. I think her and Renee Michelle both look like uh, stars. The C stars, not, not really so much. Some people seem to like them. Uh, you know, one of them was in AEW. I, I didn't see a whole lot that excited me uh, about her. And I think the gimmick's a little odd. But some people enjoyed them, and, and they were a tag team. So why not add them to the tag team division? Um, I, I actually don't think the C-Stars had interest in signing because I, I don't know why I always forget their names. One of them was conducting an inter interview and was really praising the AEW dark system and uh, even made the me mention that you know Impact needs – Lewis talks about this all the time. But she made the mention that you know Impact needs – something in place to develop <laughs> young stars, you know what I mean? So I, I think wrestlers see that, that there's there's not really that good, like, uh, that process in place to to get someone from, you know, the bottom to the mid to the top, you know? So I think that that becomes a turnoff. Uh, Renee Michelle's been working, you know, dark. I thought she would have been a great addition, but Killer Kelly was the one that, you know, she, she's got a great look. She looks like a star. Like, you can work something, you can do something with her. Uh, the match, the, the the ring work from the couple matches we saw was 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 okay. It wasn't um, you know ab above the majority of the current knockouts by any stretch of the imagination. But good name, good look, and could be a real uh, player in the knockouts division. I told you guys that some knockouts were coming. You know Taylor Wilde was number one. Uh, Killer Kelly, she's either number two or number three. Um, I say that because. Uh, you know, I was, I was told there was a couple knockouts coming board and a possible third, but they they just didn't know if, if it was going to go through. So it very well could be Killer Kelly, you know, given her issues. I don't really know, but um, uh, I, I think it's, you know, exciting to add her. And, and um, you know, I'm kind of indifferent on the Taylor Wilde thing because, you know, we're, we're bringing in, you know, girls from the past, uh but I'm a little more excited about her than, you know, when they bring ODB or something like that. And uh, Taylor Wilde is giving Willie Mack and Falaba a run for their money for worst entrance music in Impact Wrestling, though. I mean, my God. That, I, I don't know how she ever okayed that or, 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 or what it is, but bad, bad, bad. She's got a great podcast, though, so check that out. Uh, but Killer Kelly, I, I'm excited about it to see what they can do with her. She's very moldable. And then uh, the last thing I'm going to talk about before I sign off here, Jordan Grace re-signing with the company. I didn't see this coming. I even made a couple jokes on a cool fact that, you know, former, I mean, future NXT superstar Jordan Grace didn't see this coming at all. Uh, it, would, it would be a big loss to lose her because uh, she's come a long way. She really has. Like, when, when she first joined the company, I was just kind of like, she's just a, a wrestler, you know? Like, I didn't see much, like, star power in her. Uh, but she's, I mean, they've really, she's come a long way. She's come a longer way than a lot of people realize in, in every level. And she always puts on good matches. Um, oh, you know, I did say three knockouts, right? So it, uh, that's what it was. So uh, Rachel Ellering was number one, Taylor Wilde number two, and then Killer Kelly was probably the up in the air number three. That That makes sense now. So my bad, my bad, folks. Uh, so that's good. Three new faces. But anyway, it's good to see her come back because uh, they haven't been able to replace Ty Valkyrie. They haven't been able to replace uh, Kylie Ray, And they wouldn't be able to replace Jordan Grace. You know, you, they can't keep losing girls. And Jordan, Jordan Grace almost made it sound like she was definitely leaving. I think she was posturing a little bit. 
which I think Moose may be doing a little bit too. Uh, Ethan Page did it at one point, uh, but they didn't, you know, give him an offer. I guess that he felt was, you know, matched his worth. Uh, but but I think there's a little posturing going on, where wrestlers are putting it public. Hey, you know, like I can go somewhere else. I can get more money somewhere else. And it's almost a challenge to impact. Like who you, are, who are you going to step up and keep? And in all fairness, I think they let a lot of people walk. But I think. Um, I would say they were probably very prepared for this time of year so they can make a real run at some people for Slam Reversary. That's that's my guess. So I think we just had to deal with a rough few months of seeing the same people all over and over and over. And I was one of those people saying the same thing. Like, I'm tired of seeing the same people in the same matches. Um, but I think that's what it is. I think, you know, they let some people out of their contracts and instead of replacing them, they, you know, they took an opportunity to not pay them for several months. You know, especially in this pandemic time, and they're, they're you know getting ready to make a run at at some of these stars. So we'll see. You know, the last group that uh, when a bunch of people got released, you know, the only person that ended up in AEW was was Ty Conti, which is one of my favorite wrestlers in the world. Um, and I think Miro was a separate release. I don't think he was in that group, but I don't think I, I think Impact actually landed the majority of those uh, people who were released. So we'll see what happens this time around. Uh, but it, but it's a good sign to see that you know Jordan Grace is sticking around. I would imagine she, past her this contract, she's probably going to bolt, uh, much like Ty Valkyrie. You know, she stayed, and then there's some point where there's not much more you can do. Um, I don't expect people to stay in Impact forever, but I expect them to not be gone in a year like Mike Bennett was. Um, I don't even expect them to be gone in, in, in two years. You know, I think Tessa Blanchard lasted two years. Like, I think if you're going to sign with the company, and we can commit to you as fans. I think I think we want to see you around for three years, and then you can do you know you can move on, and and someone else can take your place. But uh, what we don't want to see is a revolving door of, of, of short-term contracts. That's what gets really old. So that's all I got for you guys today. Thanks for checking me out. I just want a chance to wrap with you guys real quick, and and hopefully I'll be really you know back in the saddle here soon. Um, I've been saying that for longer than I can remember, and I, I don't know that I ever fully get this channel back to where I used to be doing the daily content, but I'm, I'm, I'm damn sure going to try. So thanks for checking me out. I'm your boy, B-Cube. I am out. Peace.